There we go. We massacred ourselves into the win. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well on this fine find Sunday. I hope this is Sunday. I, I'm pre-recording. Anyway, guys, uh, please make sure if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. It really would mean a lot to us. We have a giveaway going on right now for a free Neon Dynasty booster box, a full booster box that we'll be giving away on February 23rd after the set's release. So please do check that out as well. Subscribing is one way to enter, but let's talk Lear Control, guys. This is a Demir Control list put together by another YouTuber, uh, Sonio, who I will link down below Please go check him out. Uh, the, the channel is awesome. It's a slightly larger channel than ours, uh, and he certainly does a lot of awesome gameplay and that kind of stuff. So please do check that out, but let's talk through the deck. It is kind of a tried and true classic Demir control list. However, uh, it still focuses heavily on the Leer aspect. So the idea is if you can get Leer down, you can actually replay a lot of your instants and sorceries, of which we've got quite a few in uh, the early turns of the game. So consider Fading Hope, Blood Chief's Thirst, Duress, which is a nice way to discard the opponent's hand, uh, especially if you can continuously replay it, which is quite nice. Uh, Dwari Disruption, Test of Talents, Infernal Grasp, and Siphon Insight, all of which are great options for us. We also have things like Divide by Zero, Thirst for Discovery, uh, and then of course with Divide by Zero, the, uh, the very, very handy uh, sideboard full of things. But uh, Memory Deluge is also in here, which again is very, very nice. But on top of that, we also have other ways that uh, we can kind of capitalize on these things. So for each one of these uh, extra instants and sorceries that we're hopefully gonna play, we have Siege War Witch, which is a fantastic creature, three mana menace for three uh, for a three two with Ward of Pay Three Life, which is very helpful because any amount of damage is obviously gonna help but it also creates a 1-1 token every single time we cast an instant or sorcery. So if we can get multiples of these out, we get extra 1-1s for every single instant or sorcery we play. Now, for all of those, the idea is if we can meat hook massacre, whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses a life. So what we might be able to do, and what we're hoping to be able to do, is spread the board out very, very wide, deal some damage hopefully along the way, uh, and then if need be, finish them off with the Meat Hook Massacre. So there's some options here that uh, we can just finish them off with damage or hopefully finish them off even if we get into a board stall kind of position. Uh, we do have Overcharged Amalgam here, which is a fantastic little card. 3-3 three, three for 4, Flash Flying, and Exploit. And when you exploit it, you can counter a target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. So what this allows us to do is essentially counter a spell with sacrificing a little 1-1 one, one or whatever we need to, uh, and then hopefully getting that counter on a stick as well. Uh, now again, Lear is sitting at the top here, allowing us to replay all of these, which is super handy. We do have some man lands, so Hall of the Storm Giants, just the powerhouse beater, but then also Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which allows us to exile cards from the defending player's graveyard. Now that can be very helpful depending on the kind of decks we find ourselves against, so we will want to utilize that from, from time to time. Uh, and then of course Field of Ruin is here, and Hall of Oracles, which allows us to put a 1-1 counter on target creature. You can only activate that as a sorcery and only if you've cast an instant or sorcery this turn. But that could also be kind of helpful just to add in a little extra damage here and there. So kind of an interesting inclusion. Again, I want to recommend go check out Sonio. Thank you so much for posting this list over on Aetherhub uh, and, and showing that basically creating such an awesome list because I do think this one is very, very good. We're going to test this out. We're going to send it through some games right now, hopefully get some wins and have some massive, massive fun along the way. So let's jump right in. Here we go, guys. We are in for game number one. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, interesting hand. Um, we do have some draw off of the consider that we can work our way towards. I'm gonna go for it. We'll see if it works. We don't have a heavy black hand. We do have the Infernal Grasp, which we'd like to get down at some point, obviously. But for now, we will throw this out. We get a turn one consider out, uh, and hopefully we can find ourselves a black source here. Uh, Field of Ruin. Hmm. You know, it is a land, so I'm gonna take it. Uh, just because it guarantees us the three, but that's even better. 
we just get to pass here we can jawari disruption as we see fit uh and worst case scenario of course we have infernal grasp so um well i guess no because they can just counter or uh pay the one um all right i'll go ahead and kill this now i think uh, we do need to be mana efficient as best we can, so I think that that's probably just the correct play. And we just get to pass here, leaving up basically any of these spells. Um, we could divide by zero. I don't love that idea, though. Uh, let's go ahead and thirst for discovery. Let's see what we can draw here. Uh, we can discard just a basic land, and I think we will here. I think that's perfectly fine. All right. Um, hmm trying to think what the best option is. I think it's just to throw... We do want to get the hive down at some point. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's throw that down and uh, we'll pass here. There, it looks like stuck on lands, which is obviously useful for us. Um, and this Dwari Disruption might actually come in handy, so I kind of want to hold on to it. In fact, here we go. That is perfect. Uh, now they're still just left with the 1-1, which is perfectly fine. We can handle that. Easy peasy. All right. Good, good. Um, we have so many uh, black sources now uh, that unfortunately we're running out of blue sources. But again, I do want to leave up that Dwari disruption just on the simple fact that if they've only got two mana, three mana now, it's very easy to just counter whatever they happen to have. And again, same thing. <laughs> easy kill. Um, so I'll happily take that. Uh, and I think we just let the one hit again. I'm not overly stressed about one damage here and there. Um, we've got plenty of ways we can deal with that later on in the game. So we will find our way. Uh, I think we just pass here. Pretty straightforward. Eventually we might want to Field of Ruin the uh, green source, um, if nothing else, to get us our second blue source, which would be kind of nice. But we can actually activate this as a blocker, the uh, the Hive of the Eye Tyrants, as we'd like to. Uh, <laughs> I think we just bounce it. Perfect. I'll keep a kill spell. This is obviously a human's like training style deck, uh, so anything we can do to kind of keep things around is just going to be very helpful. Uh, sure. So we can just Infernal Grasp that, um, but I actually think the play is going to be to do this. Um, we're actually kind of helping them. I guess we should have waited till the end of the turn, because now they do have an untapped land here, so a bit of a mistake on our end, but should be okay. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's bounce this back. We're going to take that uh, that learn and hopefully get something useful here. Let's see. Hmm. I think I'm going to take that. All right. Ooh, very good. Okay. Um, they did get just a plain white source, which makes me think they don't have green in their deck. Um, as a basic land source, which is kind of interesting. Two cards. I think we'll just do this. Kind of a basic play, but I think it'll work just fine. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to play down the uh, Witch. This is so good to get down, especially with the overcharged Amalgam in hand, Amalgam. Uh, what we can do is start spitting out those tokens, and then of course using that to counter an ability or a, uh, a creature, of course. So lots of great options here. This is only a sorcery, so this they they can play it, but it's not necessarily going to be the most helpful. Uh, perfect. That is definitely going to get killed. <laughs> uh, not a card we want to deal with if we don't have to, so we will definitely kill that. Ooh, there's the leer. That's fascinating. Okay. Um, does that change things? I think we just play the leer first. Um, what this allows us to do is go ahead and play this to, to kill this versus utilizing the one in our hand. Um, now we can attack here, but I don't think we do. I think we just pass. All right. I'm liking it. So far, so good. Uh, we've managed to control the game for the most part at this point. They've got another voice of the blessed. That's fine. 
The nice thing is we can just bounce that if it does happen to get too big to the indestructible level. So it's not actually, I mean, it's a big deal because it's annoying, but it's not like a massive problem for us. Ooh. <laughs> um, all right. So first things first, we definitely just kill this. <laughs> um, I think we will divide by zero on this. We're just kind of spreading the board out here as best we can, honestly. I'm going to go ahead and get the mascot exhibition. I can't play that for the land side. That makes sense. Um, cool. And then we literally just get to attack in. Uh, so now we're starting on the, the pressure side of things, which is exactly where we want to be. We still have a Fading Hope, or a, yes, a Fading Hope and a Consider left up, as well as technically Juari Disruption and Infernal Grasp, so we've got plenty of options here. Uh, very curious to see. Oh, perfect. Uh, yep. Easy counter. Uh, why would we not want to counter that? Yes? Oh, we can't counter. Spells can't be countered. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, my fault. We still get a 1-1 out of the deal, so I'm kind of okay with that, but that was definitely just a mistake on my end. All right. What do we want to do? I think we definitely Infernal Grasp here. That is just too good to leave on the battlefield, unfortunately. Um, we can Fading Hope this. Uh... I mean, I guess we'll keep... It's not a bad card to have. Um, and we, we can't win this turn. Uh, it'd be great if we could, but I just don't think we can. Uh, let's go ahead and consider... We're just adding up um, all of these counters to the best of our abilities, so we can drop that down now. Um, let's go ahead and attack in. Six plus... T so ten damage here. Um, do we want to meat hook massacre is the question. I think not yet is my assumption. Yeah, I think we just pass. Um, I like our odds. That's all I'm saying. This deck seems very efficient. Like as a control deck, that's always something you have to look for. And this just seems perfect for it. That's a very good card. Not one that I'm tremendously worried about though. Um, again, we just get a very solid attack in next turn, and then we can Meat Hook Massacre for the win. Um, which most likely will be the play. They are, draw are gaining quite a bit of life, which is slightly annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, let's go ahead and flash this Thirst for Discovery back here. Again, just maximizing the number of tokens that we can get. Uh, we do have to discard two cards here, which is a little upsetting, but again, not the end of the world. Memory Deluge and Shipwreck Marsh, perfectly fine. All right, let's play the marsh out. All right. Um, it does basically nothing. <laughs> uh, we can memory deluge. Uh, alternatively, I guess we can just mascot exhibition. Hmm. Let's do this. Let's take this and this, I suppose. Really, Test of Talents, I guess, would have been a better option, but I don't really think it matters that much. So here we get to Fading Hope. Doesn't really matter what's on top of the deck. Um, get to Fading Hope again. So now we attack. Um, now, they can double block the Siege more, which that doesn't really matter to me, um, because at this point, we're just planning to meet Hook Massacre and kill everything anyway. <laughs> um, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, I think I think we just have this, guys. I think we're just that good. That's all it takes. Uh, Sonio obviously put a very, very well-structured deck together here. Let's meet Hook Massacre for one. There we go. We massacred ourselves into the win. Look at that. I love it. Uh, fantastic. Absolutely awesome. Well done, game one. Let's see if we can do it again in game two right now.
All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And yeah, I mean, I think this is a reasonable keep. We've got a turn one Fading Hope, turn two Jawari Disruption, and then for future turns, we of course have Memory Deluge and some better stuff. But uh, I think this is good. Go ahead and play the Hive. That's actually fantastic. It gives us our second Black Source, but it also allows us to Jawari Disruption this turn if we needed to. Um, We definitely play the second Black. The question is, do we Siege more Witch? I think we do. I think at this point it's okay if we're off of the Jwari Disruption. I don't want to be because... Yeah, exactly. Um, they definitely have a play there, but... Oh, good. Um, I think we make sure we can uh, get somewhere with that. So, let's attack in here. Get three damage in. We'll pass the turn. We leave that Fading Hope up. Um, huh. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we've got a bounce deck here. Uh, with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and bounce that. <laughs> um, do we keep the land? I think we can. We're gonna want all the lands I think we can possibly get, so I'm cool with that. Let's throw that down. Let's get the attack in. We can counter anything on the way back down with the uh, the uh, amalgam. Um, so feel pretty good about that. Uh, that's fine. We'll let the Cleric class land. Uh, we'll exploit... Countering. And there we go. Uh, cool. That was a pretty solid turn. <laughs> um, we'll drop the land down. Uh, we'll attack in first. I think we just play Leer. I think that's kind of where we're at now because at this point, uh, next turn after they play, I'm sure a creature, we can Infernal Grasp or Fading Hope it. Oh, okay, Borrowed Time is good. Um, but the trick is they still don't have a lot that they can do here. Um, and we're still dealing quite a bit per turn. Oh, we could have won. Oh, missed opportunity. That was entirely my fault. Uh, we definitely could have won that turn, so hopefully we don't die. That was stupid. Uh, missed lethal with the hive. That is a three uh, damage spell, essentially, your creature, so that would have actually won the game. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, curious to see what we end up hitting here, or what they end up hitting. Uh, would really love to make sure they don't have another borrowed time. Sure. That really doesn't matter that much. They do gain some life, which is a bit annoying, but... Uh, let's... Uh, let's do this... first. Making sure to tap very methodically here. Um... I'll take both of those. It's not amazing by any means, but that's fine. Let's kill that. And again, we're just kind of stocking up. Um, they can... There we go. That was a very efficient game. My goodness. All right, that was perfect. That's two wins and a rank up to gold one. Let's see if we can go for an undefeated run, guys. We got one more game. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, this is going to be our final game. And yes, we will keep this. No one mana spell, obviously, but we do have the Disruption as well as Divide by Zero, Thirst, and Siege War Witch, so feel pretty good about our hand this time around. Let's go ahead and lean on the blue source first, uh, and then follow that up with the Swamp, most likely. Um, Field of Ruin's good, but really not until later in the game, so not worried about getting that down, and I want to make sure we allow ourselves the double up on both colors. We've got Leer, we also have, um, uh, uh, oh gosh. The memory deluge, uh, as well as the amalgam and uh, the meat hook masker on the side of the swamp. So we want to make sure that we've got uh, both available to us. They are going to reveal a land. That's cool. All right. Looks like life gain. Uh, pretty common, it seems like, that we have run into a lot of the life gain decks. Uh, now, this is an interesting one because it is the Orzhov version. Uh, so very curious to see how this actually plays out. Um, a lot of times you just see mono white, but this seems pretty interesting. Hopefully this disruption actually hits something. Paladin class is a good one. 
I'll take it. Um, not tremendously worried about what I hit with that disruption, but piloting class actually is pretty relevant. Um, it slows us down uh, as the control deck. It also powers them up, and I'm not interested in either of those two things. So uh, all too happy to get that out of there immediately. Um, would love to draw just on the side, the side of safety. I would love to have a meat hook massacre just in hand, ready to go or at least some amount of kill spells, because at the moment, obviously, we're a bit light on that. We do have Divide by Zero, though, so hopefully that might come in handy. We definitely end up playing the Witch, I think, this upcoming turn, no doubt, so we'll see how this goes. Opponent, taking a little bit of time. Perfectly fine. All right, let's go ahead and get the Witch out there. Again, just allowing us a little bit of extra bonus, extra value off of all of our instants and sorcery is certainly worth it to me. Uh, and a threat. I mean, it, it has Menace, so they have to double block it if they're gonna block it at all. With the Divide by Zero, that does make it a bit challenging as well for them, so I, I think it's definitely worth it. Cool. They do have three mana available to them this turn, and then just that Soul Mender out. Um, no plays, though. That's fascinating. Um... Let's see what happens. We're gonna attack in first. Uh, we've got the divide by zero for a little bit of backup here, so I'm not terribly worried about what they could have. Um, the question is, do we go for the second witch? I think I will. Uh, a bit of a greedy play. I think the safe play is definitely just divide by zero, but the trick here is that we're really piling on at this point when all they're doing is gaining a life per turn, and if we can keep them off of that uh, high life total, we're, we're doing okay. Um, very interested to see how this goes though. So I'm assuming they're splashing the black four removal, uh, which if it's point and shoot removal, the witch actually kind of does a good job of getting around that with the ward cost. Now it's not fully around, they can still do it, but it does cost them a little bit here, which is pretty good. Uh, I'll take three damage for a kill spell. In this instance, of course. It looks like they do have one. That's fine. We're gonna have to pay three to do it. And this takes up their entire turn, uh, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> um, because next turn, we obviously have a lot more that we can utilize here, so we certainly will be doing so. Perfect, wow, look at that. Um, all right, I'm going to be a little proactive here. We're gonna thirst for discover or thirst of discovery, uh, or discovery, not of discovery. Excuse me. We're just gonna see what we get here. Um, perfect. We can throw one of those back. We've now got the fading hope, which is very relevant. Um, we'll attack in. Uh, so now we can just fading hope whatever we see fit. Uh, we don't have to do it right this second, so we can just wait. Um, and maybe it's in response to a kill spell on the other witch or, you know, whatever. But the idea is that we can now value out that, so that's pretty useful. Cool. I like it. Uh, especially if they have... Well, we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to make too many assumptions quite yet, but um, I do like our position as of the moment. We'll see if that lasts, uh, but I do like it. It's pretty good. Really loving this deck. I, uh, I feel very strongly about it. Okay, uh, that's very good. Thankfully, we do have the opportunity to bounce this. And we will now. Um... It just slows them down a little bit. We've also got Divide by Zero next turn, so I feel okay about that. Um, we even have the Leer if we want it next turn, plus Fading Hope. So I think we can uh, safely kind of counter this for a little while. Even better, I'm just going to play the second Witch. We can Divide by Zero on that, get the, the double hits off of these, and... Uh, should be in good shape. I think we only have three witches in the deck, so it's kind of nice that we've seen all of them. <laughs> um, I'll happily take that. Doing five damage to the opponent here, and yeah, they gain one, but they're down to ten. Uh, and they're facing technically lethal next turn. Although they can gain one, I suppose, so we'll, we'll see. Ah. <sighs> 
Uh, do I care about that? Not really. I can let that hit and then see what they have now. Um, then we can learn off of this as well. So yeah, I think it was fine. We'll see what they play. This we can get around. Um, depending on what they have for three mana, we might not. So I'd like to, uh, oh, perfect. Exactly what we were hoping to do. Let's get that out of there. Let's gain a couple of these little one ones here. And that doesn't shore up the game, but it definitely puts us in a very strong position. Um, next turn, we can Leer plus Bounce Spell, if we'd like, or uh, just straight up, like, kill something. <laughs> um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we don't quite have all that we need. Uh, I think we'll take the Noxious Fume, or Necrotic Fume, excuse me, not Noxious Fumes, actually. So this allows us to essentially trade one of these guys and a spell for this and two new pests, which seems pretty good. Um, there's a Duress also, that's kind of interesting. Um, I guess we should have done this first, but I think it's fine. Let's attack in here. Let them do their thing. I guess we could have also leered first. Maybe it was better to play something else, but... I don't know, I kind of don't think it's going to matter too much. We'll see. What they should do is block with both creatures, I suppose, and then gain a life with the Soulbender. That'd be pretty good. Um, but they have to double block one of the Witches if they're going to go that route, so kind of nice that we get that opportunity here. Uh... No, I guess we do want to hit the voice first. Yeah. So if we hit the voice first... <laughs> what? All right. Uh, wow, guys. Well, let's uh, let's chat about this. All right, so the opponent definitely gave up pretty quick there on that turn. Uh, don't know that they had 100% lost, but it was definitely kind of writing on the wall at that point. But guys, we went undefeated with this Lear control list brought to us by Sonio. Again, please check out Sonio's channel. Link is down below. Uh, and thank you so much for sharing this deck. I think it was a really, really good one. Obviously, it played out perfectly, uh, and I couldn't have asked for anything better. So thank you so much uh, to Sonio. Thank you for all of you guys watching. I really do appreciate it. Hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday and hopefully we will see you guys again soon. We are going on like two weeks of non-stop gameplay, I think now, which is pretty awesome. And it's all pre-recording, so I'm trying to get ahead on it uh, to keep it coming. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again very soon. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you haven't already, but I'll see you guys in the next gameplay video.